Oh, hello everyone. It's Susie from Esoteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all living your life according to the way you want to live it. I hope you're being kind to yourself, uh, looking after yourself, being kind to your family and friends, being very kind to your putty cats and your animals, and just being kind to people generally in the world to make this place a better place. Um, today I thought I'd just look at something which I think is very interesting. And it's caught a lot of people's attention, but I just think I think there's a lot of misunderstanding to what's actually going on. So, hopefully, with this uh, video, I'll spread some uh, some light on it. Uh, sorry if this is a little bit long-winded, this video, but there is a lot in this one, so I do apologise for that. So, the uh, title of this one is Bitfinex: Why is Bitcoin US trading over three hundred and ten dollars more than other exchanges against Bitcoin US? Now I will make the distinction between Bitcoin US Tether and Bitcoin US. Okay, so Bitcoin US at the time I was looking at this was trading 310 over Bitcoin US S on other exchanges, which is basically an arbitrage. Okay, what's going on? And what I mean by an arbitrage is on another exchange you can buy Bitcoin US at say 5,700 and you can sell it on Bitfinex at 6,000. For a three hundred dollar profit uh, in U.S. dollars straight away. Now I think there is a concern that you can't actually get your U.S. dollars, and that's not the case. I've actually done it myself. But also, even if you were concerned about getting your U.S. dollars out, all you have to do is convert that U.S. dollars to say XRP and shift the XRP to your wallet or to another exchange and sell the profit. Okay, so I think there's a lot of misunderstanding to what an arbitrage is. An arbitrage is the same car, cryptocurrency pair, exactly the same, BTC USD on one exchange trading at a lower level and on another exchange trading at a higher level where you can buy on the other exchange at a lower level and sell it on the uh, Bitfinex at a higher level and basically yield a profit and basically either take the US dollars and run or even convert it to another cryptocurrency like XRP and, and uh, actually send that to another a wallet or another exchange to sell. So what, what is happening here? And let me try and explain this. So this arbitrage is real. I've done it myself. It is real. And what uh, seems to be happening is, and this is one hypothesis which I believe is true, Bitfinex wants to acquire more Bitcoin. It's just that simple. It's like a special offer, like you go to the supermarket or something, or you, you want to buy something and you're prepared to pay more for it. Like you go to a, you want to buy a house, you want to pay more for it than say someone else. So Bitfinex wants to acquire more Bitcoin and that's pretty much why they're showing a higher level against US dollars than any other exchange. Now we have seen this for a couple of days, normally in professional markets, these arbitrages don't last for very long because what happens is people start buying on the other exchanges and they keep selling on this exchange, Bitfinex, and the selling on Bitfinex tends to drive the price down and on the other exchanges tends to drive the price of Bitcoin up. So the arbitrage is still there and uh, in real professional markets, so the bond market, the foreign exchange market or the equity market, you wouldn't see this arbitrage, that's for sure. Um, also, there is uh, another issue, as we all know, connected to Bitfinex, uh, Tether, and obviously the company that owns both of them, Infinex, is this US dollar Tether issue against US dollar. And I'll also look at the relationship between that. Um, Infinex owns Tether, the corporation, and it also owns uh, Bitfinex, the crypto exchange. So obviously the owners and the people behind uh, Infinex, Tether Corporation, as well as Bitfinex are the same people. So US dollar Tether is now, according to their website of Tether, not necessarily one for one US dollar. Okay, it can also include other assets, which can be other liquid assets, including crypto assets and loans to other entities. Okay, and that's really important. Also, the issuance of Tether, when you check out the white paper, before 
Tether would do a US dollar Tether issuance, but they would originally get in the US dollars first before they did the US dollar Tether issuance. And that US dollar Tether insu issuance would come from the Tether Corporation to the tr Tether Treasury to Bitfinex, which would operate as conjoint and distribute that tether to other exchanges. So as you know, other exchanges hold US tether and those other exchanges could be, you know, Hubie Exchange, uh, Binance, it could be uh, Polynex, it could be Bittrex and the like, okay? So now with this issue at the moment that Bitfinex and tether are going through, with the Attorney General, General uh, they've come back and the Attorney General is actually saying that there's a hole in the balance sheet of $850 million US. Uh, Tether have come back and said of the Tether that's been issued, 74% is backed by US dollars. There is a time lag obviously to when the US dollar Tether is actually issued and when they actually buy US dollars and that there are other securities that back the US dollar tether according to their change of their tether definition as of February 2019. Okay, so if we do look at, say, for example, US tether not being backed one for one with US dollars, we can also say other exchanges are also affected by this, not just Bitfinex. Because as I said before, Bitfinex gets the US dollar tether from Tether Treasury and it acts as a conduit, a conduit to actually send out that tether to other exchanges. So the other exchanges will have the same issue that it's not a one for one. Uh, one dollar of tether equals one dollar US because it's not backed exactly a hundred percent to US dollars. Now technically speaking also if it was only 74% backed US dollars, you could literally say Tether should be uh, 74 cents to $1 of US Tether, okay? So there's a lot I'm talking about in this um, YouTube, so you really need, lead, need to listen fairly carefully because there is a lot that I'm covering and it's going to be quite in-depth. You might need to um, you might need to rewind this YouTube because I am coming up with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things in this YouTube. It is fairly fairly detailed and I just want to make it clear um, you know this arbitrage is real some people are not taking advantage of it because they're concerned they can't get the US dollars out of Bitfinex but if you're concerned about that you can always go and buy another cryptocurrency like XRP against your US dollars that you made profit from and send your XRP out okay so it's very very simple to take take advantage of this arbitrage I have to say so um, now, according to Bitfinex via Tether, they've said the 850 million is only temporary and it's stuck with uh, other governments and other uh, crypto exchanges and they will get that money back. So that's pretty much what they've said and we'll go through the details of that. Uh, and also just going back to this arbitrage, this arbitrage, the difference between Bitcoin US sitting on other exchanges and Bitcoin uh, US sitting on Bitfinance, the gap was 310 and that gap is closing down to about $230. So the other exchanges are responding to the arbitrage by you know lifting their uh, Bitcoin US price and clearly Bitcoin US on the Bitfinex exchange is coming down slightly. That's why that margin is coming in from $310 to 230 so this is a real arbitrage and in professional markets this arbitrage would not stay here for this long okay so if we look at the reasons why bitfinex uh, uh have a premium on uh their their bitcoin us it's very clear if you look at their uh bitcoin wallet from bitfinex their cold wallet uh they have lost quite a lot of bitcoin and obviously, and as you can see, this Bitcoin balance here, uh, as you can see, they're trying to store up their Bitcoin uh, again. So according to, to this, they have literally, uh, what is it, 89,000 Bitcoin. And uh, it's 0.5% uh, of all coins. 
uh, according to this, they received today uh, 5624 and they've sent out 4787. Okay, so that's a net balance uh, according to that. Now you can obviously find out the list of addresses of their wallets and, you know, be tethered treasury. It'd be different accounts going to different um, exchanges, Bitfinex, but also the other exchanges that hold uh, uh, US dollar tether as well. So if we look at this uh, wallet address here, this is tether, you'll find the top US dollar uh, tether balances. And the first one we see is Hubie, and they're carrying well over 439 mil, nearly 440 mil. Then you've got Tether Treasury holding 331 mil, nearly Oak X 205 mil, Bitrex 67.74 mil. Uh, we don't know who that one is there. Poloniex 41.8 mil, Binance 35. 31 mils nearly uh, is quarantined. If we go down further, we don't know who the other ones are here. Binance at 18.8. Bitfinex at 15.49 mil. Kraken at 11.279 and, and the like. So we don't actually know the rest of those addresses there. So technically speaking, the other exchanges that hold US dollar treasury do have the same issue as Bitfinex in the sense that uh, it's not one for one for US dollars. Uh, it's actually 74% uh, US dollars for these holdings that they actually hold. Well, so let's just go through some of the arguments that we've heard about this tether situation. I know this is going to be a bit convoluted, this uh, YouTube, but there is a lot to put into this YouTube. Now, uh, last year, obviously, uh, the Tether organization, Tether Limited, got um, uh, a lawyer to basically review their uh, US dollar Tether against their US dollars, okay? And effectively, it was agreed of the 2.5 billion US dollar Tether, it was held against US dollar assets. Even though it wasn't an auditing engagement, wasn't an audit, and they're not an accounting firm, it was a lawyer, uh, a New York uh, lawyer that basically signed off and said yes they have 2.5 billion of US tether and yes they have 2.5 billion of US dollar assets and this was the June the 1st 2018 and you can look that up okay there's a whole lot of links here so um, now we've got a situation May the 1st 2019 uh, literally the Attorney General uh, in at the end of April basically said that there's some cover-up uh, with Bitfinex and uh, Tether, and it's a $850 million cover-up, uh, co-mingled client and corporate funds. And they're saying they're hiding an apparent loss of $850 million. Bitfinex and Tether are disputing this, and they're saying that is not the case at all, and that the US Attorney General doesn't have any jurisdiction over these companies, because these companies are not based in the US, number one, and also Tether changed their website a couple of months ago to say that US dollar Tether is not 100% backed by US dollars and that the funds can be used for loans from affiliated companies and other assets can be used to also back the US dollar Tether, which I think is very, very interesting in itself. If you look at the Tether website, and this again uh, was uh, adjusted on February the 26th, they basically said 100% backed by our reserves, which is traditional currency, cash equivalent. From time to time, we might have assets and receivable from loans by Tether to third parties, which may include affiliate entities. Now, this could be other exchanges where they've given a loan of Tether to, and they haven't received the US dollars, one for one. I, for example, say if Tron is going to use Tether or some other exchange, for example. Okay, so basically, the, the thing is, the credit risk for Tether uh, is a lot higher than, say, the credit risk for US dollars, which is issued by the US government, and the US government has a AA plus credit rating. So also, if Tether lends out money to other entities, those other entities, would they be other exchanges, 
do not have a credit rating. So again, the credit risk of US dollars to lending out money to other exchanges without US dollars is completely different and makes the credit risk much higher uh, for, for Tether per se. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There, we are covering a lot of stuff here, guys. So this arbitrage, as I said, is very real. Um, you know, you could literally find an exchange where you can buy BTC USD and make sure it's exactly the same cryptocurrency pair at 5834 and you could sell it on Bitfinex at 611.5. And again, the profit is 277.5 USD per one Bitcoin for nothing. And again, as I said, if you're concerned about getting US dollars out, just convert US dollars of 277.5 into XRP and set out your XRP to another wallet or another exchange. And as far as I'm concerned, this is money for jam, seriously. The professional market would be all over this and this would not stay here very, very long at all, okay? So clearly what's happening here is Bitfinex want uh, BTC. That's what they want, okay? So let's look at the um, relationship between Bitfinex, Tether and Infinex. Infinex Inc. owns Bitfinex and Tether, okay? And we know there's a probe by the Attorney General of the New York State, uh, New York State, uh, putting a court order in against Infinex to basically show their operations and how they back the U.S. dollar tether. The Eternal General, Eternal Attorney General, is basically saying it's a cover up, and um, essentially, you know, saying prove that you've got enough assets against your U.S. dollar tether. Now. Again, Bitfinex and Tether have come back and said they were using a crypto capital corporation, a Panamanian payment processor uh, that was handling withdrawals and requests for clients. And basically, a lot of these, a lot of the Bitcoin or whatever, or the US dollars is being held by foreign governments, essentially. And that's the reason why they don't seem to have the US dollars against the US tether. But Bitfinex and Tether have basically said they're following this up. So uh, the Eternal General is still going on with this and Bitfinex's re uh, reply was, and they fired back their reply and they basically said, uh, Bitfinex released a statement on its website arguing that the 850 million in question was not lost by crypto capital but has been seized and safe garden and is working to get their money back. The company substantiated and sustained that both Bitfinex and Tether are financially strong, full stop. Okay, so whether you believe one or the other, it's, it's a very interesting story. So um, they've also come back, Tether, and said of the US dollars that we hold against our US Tether, it's roughly about 74% of real US dollars we hold against our US dollar tether. Now, technically speaking, you could argue that US dollar tether should be trading almost down to 74 cents against one US dollar. Now, we have seen that relationship change in the past where US dollar tether basically traded down to 90 cents against the US dollar. Because as you can appreciate, the credit risk on Tether as a corporation is a lot higher than the credit risk on the US government, which is AA plus, okay? Uh, Tether as a corporation doesn't have a credit rating. It is a private company, doesn't have a credit rating, like Bitfinex is a private company and Infinex is a private company, okay? So you need to keep that uh, in the back of your mind as well, okay? So if we go to Infinex, Infinex, as I said, is a private company. It's based in Hong Kong, founded in 2012. And these are the key executives. Um, and I won't go through those, but those key executives you will find are uh, also the key executives in the Tether organization as well as the Bitfinex organization. Okay, so we go to the next one. 
you'll find uh, in the Tether organization, same key uh, directors. And if you go to the Bitfinex organization, uh, Giancarlo, uh, Jean, Louise, and Philippe, Philip Potter are also the same key executive group. Okay, very important. So um, also, again, as I said, this 100% backed uh, one for one uh, US dollars has been changed as a definition on the Tether uh, website as well. Okay, really important. So um, we do find with Bitfinex, there have been withdrawal problems, but we also find uh, that those withdrawal problems have been fixed, but we also find that there have been outflows on a lot of the exchanges, potentially because of this US dollar tether as well. Also, um, Bitfinex also mentioned they changed their um, Bitfinex slash tether had changed one of their banking relationships from Hong Kong Bank, HSBC and JP Morgan to a bank in the Bahamas called Deltic Bank, which seems to me a little bit suspicious because in the Bahamas, you've got very high country risk uh, in the Bahamas, not a great counterparty or credit risk and very, very high counterparty risk. Also with Deltic, uh, last year, November the 6th, uh, there was some suspicion that they were involved in some Venezuelan money laundering case. So, you know, I, I would be concerned a little bit about their banking relationships. That's a fact. But in saying that, I'm not going to presume anything. I'm just highlighting it as, as a point uh, for you guys to do some more due diligence, okay, in, in terms of that. Again, if we look at um, basically Tether, Again, it is supposed to mirror, and I won't spend too much time on this, it is supposed to mirror US dollars, as I've mentioned. And according to Tether's white paper, they're supposed to get US dollar deposit in first to issue the US Tether. This then goes to Bitfinex, who then act as a conduit to send it across to other exchanges, very simply. But as I said before, uh, their uh, website was changed at the end of February to say it wasn't just one for one to US dollars, but it was also other securities that could be liquidated to cash and loans to other counterparties uh, and other exchanges and the like. And it could even be cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, for example. So the question is also uh, akin to this, why should Tether be higher than real US dollars? In my mind, Tether should be lower than real US dollars because it is, it is issued by a corporation being Tether. They don't have a credit rating, they're only a company, they're based out of Hong Kong and the US dollar is basically issued by the US government with a double A plus credit rating. So the credit rating of the US government is higher than Tether and therefore Tether should not reflect uh, itself being higher than the US dollar itself. It just seems absolutely ridiculous and it's completely wrong. In my mind, Tether should be trading a lot lower than US dollars. This is not uh, a financial advice investment uh, decision. It's basically education only, okay? So going to the next slide, I'm gonna speed this up because uh, it's going a lot to do here. Going to the next slide, there is a whole issue with different stable coins and everything. And one thing I do wanna make clear is even though a coin is called a stable coin, and it's you know it's issued against US dollars or yen or whatever. The fact is it's not really stable because if the US dollars goes up or the US dollar goes down, uh, you're effectively you know you're effectively going to move with that uh, with that underlying asset that the coin is connected to. Okay, and that's really important. So US dollar tether is you know connected to us dollars one for one but it doesn't mean the value is stable because if the us dollar keeps going up or down this thing's going to go up or down as well okay to other currencies so just got to make that really clear also uh, there are a lot of other stable coins out there and one thing we've found over time is us dollar tether is actually losing uh, its market dominance uh, whereas in the past, US dollar tether was, you know, 94% of the market. Now it's down to about 70% of the market. And there are other coins out there 
like PAX, USD, uh, USDC, Circles USD, and a few others, where they're actually gaining more momentum because their fees are less, and you know you can do smaller withdrawals than say US dollar Tether, for example. Um, also, some people say that with US dollar Tether, there is no transparency. Uh, for example, Michael Novogratz and uh, others are saying that you know there's been a lot of controversy about Tether because they haven't been up front uh, effectively uh, with you know changing their white paper and all they've done is pretty much put something on their website uh, and also obviously being subpoenaed by US regulators uh, in terms of um, basically whether they have the US dollars uh, to, to back the US dollar tether they're actually issuing. And also there's some controversy about whether US dollar tether is issued to actually push up the price of Bitcoin. Okay, so there's a whole lot of uh, controversy going on. Uh, Tether themselves did do an unofficial audit where they got a solicitor in to actually confirm their Tether balance and their US dollar balance. So there's been a lot go on and that's why all this controversy is around the US Tether and why we're seeing this Bitcoin increase as well. But coupled with that, and you know, there, as I said, there's a heap going on here. Just recently, um, Tether Treasury did issue another 300 million, and that was on the 24th of April. And since that time, we have seen Bitcoin go up, okay? And we have seen Bitcoin go up quite substantially. Now, issuing uh, Tether is no different, say, in, say, the real economy to issuing US dollars and putting another 300 million into the ecosystem. So if you look at Tether, like putting 300 million into the ecosystem, it's basically putting money into the cryptocurrency system and clearly people are going to start using that money to buy crypto assets and this is effectively what we're seeing okay so uh, and you can see that with the crypto market uh, crypto assets are being bought okay so uh, it, it's pretty interesting also there's been a lot of uh, whale alerts in terms of very large slices uh, of tether going through and very large deals going through to buy Bitcoin as well. And we have seen the volume of Bitcoin rising quite quickly as well. Okay. So if we look at Bitfinex, I'm just trying to speed this up because there's a lot to do. Bitfinex does have the same members. They're, uh, they're basically a private company. And again, these uh, Bitfinex is also out of Hong Kong as well. Okay. So let's just go through very quickly. Not, there is a lot in here, I'm afraid. Um, according to this, uh, 2.8 billion is US Tether at this stage. Let's just quickly go through. We are seeing that Tether transactions are rising and they've, they've risen quite substantially uh, since, uh, you know, since, the, uh, since April. And, uh, you know, if we go back to, if we look at this, you'll be able to see that prices have risen quite quickly and transactions are rising as well. Just on the next slide. You'll see transactions are rising quite quickly. Um, so there's a lot of activity going on in Tether. Uh, and you'll see this is the uh, green line of US Tether. And this is against US dollars. And you'll see those transactions have actually increased quite quickly. Tether transactions have hit a high of 38,150 uh, on March the 31st. And that's pretty much a new milestone for Tether transactions, okay? Uh, so just quickly going through, also, what we're finding is, and, and don't forget, coupled with this, there is a lot to say here. Coupled with this, we've got total supply, as everyone knows, max supply of Bitcoin is 21 mil, and already circulating supply is 17.68. So the difference between the 17.68 and the 21 mil is the remainder of, the, of Bitcoin that has to be mined. Now, once that's done, there's no more Bitcoin to come to the market, okay? And we know overall the market is short Bitcoin, okay? There's a lot of Bitcoin shorts out there. As Bitcoin continues to rally, the shorts will have to be bought back, okay? And that's a fact. So earlier today, we saw these prices for Bitcoin and other exchanges uh, against US dollars. Uh, this is five for, that's definitely an outlier. But generally against US dollars at about 5,600. 5,700 
and on uh, Bitfinex we saw it around uh, 5,900 okay so uh, so obviously that arbitrage was still there and it was a bit wider and uh, if we look at the shorts and this is another thing Bitcoin USD shorts you know on the daily you know they're still around 30,000 as Bitcoin US dollars keeps rising these shorts where a trader has sold US uh, sold Bitcoin and bought real US dollars they're going to have to start cutting back their shorts okay so you'd expect that to come back down again because as the market rallies for Bitcoin they're actually losing money because they've sold Bitcoin okay which means they have to buy Bitcoin okay so if we go to also uh, the outflows on the exchanges we'll find that Binance has had an inflow of 25 percent uh, an outflow of 21 percent so net all the net in the net uh, inflow the, the net they net flows are net inflows bit for next has had net outflows which is not great net outflows now that could be obviously withdrawals or cryptocurrency oh no sorry it's US dollars I should say so yet yeah, US dollars have had outflows uh, negative negative outflows okay which is not great Bitstamp have had positive inflows um, but we're also seeing Bit Bitnex have had negative outflows. We're seeing Bittrex also negative outflows and Polynex positive. So three of the exchanges we are seeing negative inflows and the other the other three positive inflows. So I think it's important to say it's not just Bit for Next that are seeing negative outflows, but also Bitmex and also Bittrex, okay? So uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing um, on that story, okay? Which is not great for Bitfinex. We we hope that they have, you know, uh, deep pockets to make, you know, to be able to have these outflows um, of, of 50 million uh, US by the looks of this, so 50 million US, okay? And they're not getting in a lot of inflows. Uh, mind you, those inflows are higher than other cryptocurrency exchanges. So we look at Bitstamp, 19 mil, a bit next, and, and so forth. So just pretty much going forward, uh, Bitmex is basically a derivatives market. So I just want to look at the volumes here. Uh, we've got Tether, which is Binance, uh, Bittrex, which is US dollars, and Tether. And again, uh, Bitcoin is at uh, 5572, so clearly an arbitrage. You could buy Bitcoin against US dollar and Bittrex at that 5572 and sell it on Bitfinance at uh, over 6000 And they also, do they have US Tether against that as well? And, and they also have US dollar Tether. Now that's a very weird thing there because technically speaking, US dollar Tether should trade much lower than US dollars. So I find that quite strange, that relationship there. And in my mind, that shouldn't be that relationship should not be because US dollars uh, has a higher credit rating than US dollar tether which does which has no credit rating at all okay so um, very strange situation which which is going on with markets at the moment so we do find Bitcoin against US dollar tether lower than Bitcoin against US dollars which is the relationship I would expect pretty much okay so just going through um, just some of the pricing pricing you'll find and as i said uh bitfinex has had net outflows and those outflows you know were quite high on the 26th of fourth and this is obviously around the time that the eternal general uh said so they're looking into uh bitfinex and um and tether the corporation uh, but those net outflows have actually reduced and they've come right down, which, which things are seem to be stabilizing, uh, which, is, which is a good story. Uh, and also at the same time, Bitcoin is actually rising. So, uh, but we, as I said before, we also see it with other exchanges as well. So, uh, Bitmex inflows are higher, outflows are lower. Uh, with Binance, we've got inflows higher, outflows lower. Just in recent days, Polynex uh, pretty much equal 
and so forth. And as I said, that gap between Bitcoin uh, on Bitfinex and on the other exchanges is, is, is closing and it's closing to 255 and I think at the moment it's probably around 230. So, um, so what we've got pretty much is Bitfinex are buying Bitcoin and they want to hold Bitcoin either for themselves or they're buying it for a real client, okay? And the market overall is short Bitcoin. Uh, US dollar tether in my mind should not be trading higher than US dollars which are issued by the US government because the US government has a, a AA plus credit rating, okay? And US tether doesn't have a credit rating at all because it's issued by a corporation. We are finding that Bitfinex has got outflows and so you need to be careful with, with counterparty risk to Bitfinex. There's no doubt about that. You don't have to hold your assets on Bitfinex. You can take out the US dollars by virtue of converting it to XRP or uh, basically converting any cryptocurrency asset you've got to your wallet. The market generally is short Bitcoin and so is being forced to buy Bitcoin, which is driving the prices up. Uh, you can basically get a US tether, sell US dollar tether and buy US dollars. And uh, pretty much uh, in my mind, it seems to me that Bitcoin will keep rising, uh, particularly with Bitfinex basically offering this premium in the market. Anyway, guys, this is all uh, food for thought. It is education only. It's not financial advice or trading advice or anything like that. Um, just, uh, yeah, so have a look at that. Do your own due diligence. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all well. Please do look after yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to your family and friends. Be kind to your putty cats and your beautiful animals. And just be kind to strangers in the world to make this place, this world, a better place. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.